Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run for the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as it is looking highly variable both in terms of precipitation amounts and in terms of temperatures. We are going to see some very mild temperatures around but we're also going to see some cooler temperatures around so it is going to be very up and down over the next five days but generally will be more around that average to above average mark. However, as we head into early February, as we'll see from the long range charts, there has been a pretty substantial shift to some cooler patterns perhaps starting to emerge. No major blocking, no major cold at this stage, but definitely a shift towards more northerly or northwesterly winds as we do start to see a bit of a trend of more amplification in the jet stream. Now that could bring, as I said, cooler weather, but equally it could bring a lot more rain as we see low pressure uh, systems push further southward. So it is going to be one to watch, but there has been quite a substantial shift around that day 10 point in all of the models today, and especially the ensemble members, which have been fairly bullish in very mild conditions over the next couple of weeks, but perhaps that is starting to change into the early February time frame. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now, if you start on the live radar, you can see it is pretty variable at the moment. So we've got some areas of pretty heavy rain around, especially further northwards, especially across parts of Wales, northern England, and even into parts of Scotland. We've got a bit of a decaying weather front, producing some rain, but nothing too substantial. But of course, if you are trapped underneath, it is going to feel pretty miserable indeed. Further south and eastwards, it's drier. Further northwards and westwards, it's drier as well. And this is, as I said, just going to be the pattern over the coming days, where it's going to be very, very up and down. Now, if you look at the temperatures, as around 6 p.m., it is a pretty mild day indeed. But a lot of cloud around and those showers, it doesn't mean that the temperatures won't feel all too mild in places. But generally, for a mid to late January day, it is very mild outside, around the 10 to 12 degree mark, maybe even slightly higher in a couple of places and as I said we could see more days like this uh, in the next sort of few days and we could see some cooler days mixing in with that so as I said highly highly variable. Now if you go over to the UKV we'll be able to see the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days. You can see more rain trying to push in overnight and it is pretty successful in most areas we'll see an hour or two of rain at least and most of that rain will actually be pretty heavy indeed. But it does clear by the morning and we're into a sort of pattern of sunshine and showers further northwards but further southwards it's pretty dry and pretty sunny. Of course that's a cold front sweeping in overnight so it will be a little bit chillier tomorrow but still probably around the average mark. As we head into the weekend, we do see some more clouds starting to build, especially from the west and northwest, but it doesn't make too many inroads, and we then start to see a bit more rain trying to spread in for Sunday. Still very cloudy, not to drizzle around, another weather front trying to push in, but because we have higher pressure further southwards, it does hold it off and tries to push it back away, and you can see it has very little success before actually getting pushed back out into the Atlantic before the back edge of the low sweeps through. So you can see very variable conditions over the coming days. Lots of areas of rain around, but equally some big areas of dry weather as well, especially further southwards and eastwards. And if we do just briefly run over the upper air temperatures, you can see the highly variable upper air temperatures we do have. You can see it's well above average at the moment, and then much colder air sweeps in overnight into tomorrow. But of course, because it's only temporary, and it's not hanging around for long, it doesn't affect the surface temperatures all too much. The upper air temperatures are very cold, but at the surface, it probably will actually even just dip to around average. But then as we head into the weekend, those cooler temperatures start to degrade away, and we see a very mild air mass moving for southern areas there, spreading northwards, before eventually the cool air sweeps back in and then gets pushed away by the mild air, and then the cooler air returns once again. So you can see what I mean by those upper air temperatures are going to be all over the place, and it will equate to a certain an extent with the surface. The surface temperatures don't shift uh, that quickly or anywhere near as quickly as upper air temperatures do, but it definitely uh, is going to I mean it is going to feel cold some days, but pretty mild others. Now, as we head through this evening into tomorrow, I said that cold air mass will sweep through and we will see temperatures around the average, maybe slightly below average further northwards, maybe getting up towards the 7 to 9 degrees at 
best as we progress into Saturday. Could be a little bit of a frost in the south, but milder air is pushing in. And you can see by the afternoon, again, around that 7 to 10 degree mark, but the temperatures are rising. And you can see overnight into Sunday, temperatures do fall, but then they start to rise rapidly through Sunday afternoon, with some areas in the west seeing 12 or 13 degrees into Monday. Cold air sweeps back in and it turns chilly for northern areas but southern areas are in that milder air still and you can see it's 12 or 13 degrees across parts of southwest England, northern Ireland and parts of Scotland. It's only one or two, maybe three or four at best. So you can see how the very variable conditions do get to the surface. And then finally, as we head into Tuesday, we're all kind of in and around average to a slightly above average, maybe again, 12 or 13 degrees in and around the London area. But as I said, it's going to be very variable over the next five days. But could we be starting to see a bit of a pattern change for the longer term? Now, if we do go over to the latest midday run from the GFS, you can see westerly winds continue over the coming days. High pressure tries to build in, and that gives us our slightly milder, drier days in there. But generally, the pattern doesn't change all too much. As we head towards day 10, though, you can see amplification of the jet stream starts to emerge. You see lows are diving further into the Atlantic, and we start to see that jet stream become a bit more wavy. Now, initially, it doesn't gonna, it was not going to really change our pattern all too much, but right in the extended range, we do start to see a little bit of a pattern. Look at the low here, so much further south than any low pressure previously, driving into uh, potentially into northern Spain or France, and you see high pressure starting to build towards northeast Canada. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be massively blocked and cold, but it does mean that cooler conditions would become more likely. doesn't mean they're guaranteed, but more likely with more northerlies and northwesterly winds. That jet stream aligned more northwesterly to south and easterly, and potentially even straight northerly if we do get blocking into place. At this point, you can see we're not in any especially cold air, but you can definitely see that milder air that is going to be very close by or over the top of us over the coming days is getting pushed well to our south. So again, no substantial shift, no, no extreme being observed here, but definitely a shift towards cooler conditions perhaps coming back in the longer term. If you do compare to the GM, uh, that GFS went out to 384 hours. The GM, though, does it a little bit quicker. It does it towards day 10, we see that shift. Again, westerly winds continue over the coming days. But as we are towards day 10, we do see that high pressure trying to penetrate up towards Greenland. Now, it's uncertain to see whether the high pressure will actually get into the Arctic. But definitely is showing amplification and definitely would be suggesting cooler air starting to emerge again it's nothing crazy at this stage we're actually still above average but the airstream is coming in from the north so it would turn a lot colder in the subsequent days but again just hints from the latest gm interesting to see that in the longer term if you look at the latest ecm though yeah, unfortunately it only goes out to 192 hours at this stage and you can see out to 192 hours it's actually pretty similar to the gm in terms of trying to build that high up towards Greenland, so perhaps, again, a bit of a shift here. I must emphasise, we are still probably well above average there. Colder air is moving in, it wouldn't be anything too crazy in the immediate time following this, but perhaps in the days, maybe even week after this, we could see something a little bit colder and potentially even snowy as well. Now, if you finish by looking at the ensembles, you can see this very well reflected. Over next week to 10 days, we are well up off average, dipping in and out um, of different air masses, but generally above average. But you can see around that 3rd or 4th of February point, around the day 9, day 10 point, we do see a substantial shift towards average again. As I said, no major cold or blocking signal because you know, ensemble mean is hovering around average, but definitely some cold and even some very cold runs starting to appear. Now, the GFS has shown cold runs over the past few days, but no many, nowhere near as many as this. So definitely a shift towards the risk of colder weather emerging as we head into early February. TV temperatures do take a dip as well in the longer term, but of course with milder members there, still doesn't show anything too crazy. And of course, the best way to view cold rare masses is the dew point. Definitely a big shift of dew points, uh, or ensemble members producing dew points below freezing, which would be cold enough for snow. 
And if you compare to the Eastern Blue F, we'll have to look at the midnight runs, because the midday runs haven't fully come out yet. You can see, though, it is very similar. Average to well above average over the next week to 10 days, but still oscillating up and down. You can see, though, around again the third or fourth, we are back towards average. Scatter is emerging, but the trend is for more colder runs. The Eastern Blue F has been very bullish in a very mild pattern over the past few days, but today it's shifted quite substantially to the risk of more cooler conditions, with quite a few more cold ensemble members there in the, the longer term. If we go back even to the midday run yesterday, you can see it's shifted by at least two or three degrees, which does show you where the trends are going. It's going to be one to watch quite closely over the coming days and the next sort of week or so. But the trends, uh, the longer term trends, have always been for potentially cold weather returning into early February. But we hadn't seen it in the short range or medium range runs yet. But perhaps are we starting to see those signs now? As I said, going to have to keep a very close eye on it. But for the time being, we're just going to have to keep an eye on the very up and down conditions over the coming days and just watch what happens in that longer term period. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.